Good morning. So yesterday, um, I had a real failure of a session, really. Um, I've, I had um, problems with actually just moving one um, Go module, Go file, into its own um, package as such, an internal package. And it brought to light all kinds of problems with um, the way I'd structured the Snippet Pixie next project. Um, so I ended up flailing around, having all kinds of problems. Um, but last night, um, in my spare time, um, while watching YouTube and stuff, I tried all kinds of things and I ended up doing um, quite a large refactor of the project um, to make it um, basically work um, uh, and to make it easier to use in the future. So I'll give you a quick um, summary of what's changed and then we'll get back onto proper dev. So the first thing uh, that's changed is that the commands are now named after the binary um, that they actually produce. So instead of CLI, we have snippet pixie. We have snippet pixie D instead of daemon and snippet pixie GUI instead of GUI. Um, and they each have their own mod file now. Um, so this hopefully fixes up um, all the issues I had whereby previously I had a um, a single global mod file uh, go mod file um, down on the top of the level top level of the, of the uh, project but for snippet pixie GUI which is built with whales um, it has its own uh, go mod file and it's got its own config and all kinds of things <clears throat> And that was producing some weirdness in the conflicts when I wanted to then start integrating code from outside of the the GUI stuff into it. Um, that was the that was what started the problem yesterday. Um, so each now has its own uh, mod file, um, including of course the GUI, um, which includes this this um this first line here uh, the internal package of service that's that was the instigator of all the problems yesterday um which is um down in here and you'll notice that that too has a mod file now uh, as well as make file um, and it's doing all the right things it's you know saying oh, i'm published i've got um it's looking for internal packages effectively um, while we're doing dev. It's got requirements and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I've upgraded all the other ones to also use mod files. Um, so export has one manager and of course service. And then the previously public -ish packages, they had them anyway, um, which maybe caused some problems. Um, but I believe um, I also found that one of the issues I had was that snippet, the snippet package was um, saying it was compatible with Go 1.16, um, which caused some weirdness that we saw yesterday with um, some dependencies say they, you know, they couldn't kind of resolve because we had... Um, they wanted to support 16 um, and 17, and that's all kind of the weirdness. Um, so anyway, so that's brought up to now the same standard as uh, everything else. Um, so they've got all these modules sorted now. Um, and then, of course, um, make files all had to be changed as well. Um, and I found that I had some weirdness there as well. Um, I had a couple of places where I think in particular in the snippet pixie GUI um, 
I had like the go mod section there was looking back to the, the high level um, one. So it would only want to recompile if the top level go mod had been updated. Whereas if I had added a dependency to the, the go mod in the Wales built GUI, it wasn't detecting it and wasn't wanting to remake it. Um, so um, even though um, Wales itself, if it, if it had been called, if I'd done a Wales build or whatever, that would have detected the problem uh, or the change and done the work, but I wasn't even get to the point where it was called in Wales. So, so that's all fixed up now. All the um, all the make files have got this kind of format where um, it's looking for its local mod file, and then it's going back and looking at the packages and internals, because if they've changed any kind of dependency, you know, you might want to recompile. Um, and so that's obviously included here. Um, and all the make files now do that. Um, and then the final major issue I had was um, the internal package manager. Uh, because it uses um, Seago for access to uh, the clipboard, um, it needs the X11 uh, libraries, um, the tests were failing. Um, so, which was weird because it had been working beforehand. Um, but I found that I had to make um, a couple of changes to the, that's because I'm on Nix. And so um, you need to have your library paths properly set and then environment variables and so on. So after a little bit of um, mucking about with uh, what to do, I ended up um, adding this line, these three lines here. Um, so it's a shell hook and it just exports LD library path um, and it's got um, and it's just adding in libx11. So if I um, yeah so everything's working now um, I should be able to just like just make sure everything's working. So if I do um, a make clean Oh, it's all working there. I can do a make, no problem now. And I can do a make test as well. Oh, and that was one other thing that I noticed I'd done weirdly as well. Um, um, on the, yeah, on the make, uh, on the test, on the make files, in the test, and uh, test verbose. I had used a format which had like go test and then dot to say just test this this directory. Turns out that when you do that, it will automatically use a cache. Um, I didn't know that. Um, if it has if it has one, so if you've run if you've run the tests um, and they've passed. Um, it would generally use the cache if you use a, like a, a dot there. By taking that out, um, it will reappraise every time, uh, which turns out to be really important when you're mucking about with LD library paths. Um, and you know, sometimes it passes and sometimes it fails, um, and you're not sure why. And it all depends on how you've been setting things up. Um, so by doing this, it's forcing it to run um, and the LD library path was being properly checked and everything uh, for the Seago. So um, all in all, um, it took me a few hours last night uh, mucking about, um, trying all these different things, making sure everything hung together, testing it all out. Um, but we're now at a point where it's back and working. I'm sure I'll probably find something somewhere um, as I go along, which I need to tweak. Um, but I think we've got a much better base. I think um, I, had, I had it in the back of my mind that I'd done it wrong by having the the high level go.mod and then having, you know, separate binaries without any mod files. Um, and I think um, by making sure that every single sort of deliverable as such, um, every package, every binary has its own mod file. Um, I think we're probably in a better con 
better position there to control dependencies and make sure everything hangs together. Especially as we're using make to go in and go, right, make me, make me, test me, um, rather than doing it from like some high level level. So I think we're good now. Right, um, so on to actual development now. Um, I'm kind of torn at the moment because I know that the, uh, the Ubuntu builds are failing um, because it doesn't understand what Wales is. There's no Wales package. Um, and I kind of want to go fix that, but maybe I'll do that um, in my spare time. Uh, the... Um, just double check actually the last one yeah so the ubuntu ones are failing at the moment um because you go wales build and it says uh what's wales and then but because i actually i've published the wales package for nixos well, nix packages and um, that's fine um, and it's, it's doing the full on um, build and test, no problem. Can't see any problems there. So, which is nice. So, I'm okay with that. Um, just at some point, I do want to make sure that the Ubuntu side of things are working. Um, so, I might need to um, upgrade the build there so that it actually builds Wales and then uses it. So. Uh, but I'll probably do that another day. Um, it might take a little bit of time of fiddling about to do that. So, um, we were on the path to start um, getting the GUI to be able to save a new snippet. So that's the task for today, um, to try and actually get that working. Um, so I'll clean up some of this here. What we were working on is in here. So at the moment we've got this add snippet. Um, I think I might just bump up the, uh, the font size here. It's a little bit small. I noticed that while I was checking a video yesterday. Actually, both need it. Let's just bump this to 16. Okay. But on the editor... Maybe 16 as well? see. That's a bit easier to see, isn't it? Okay. Um, yeah, it just fits. I'll just move that a little bit so you've got a bit more room. Okay. So, um, what we have is a function on the back end uh, in the Go uh, called Add Snippet, and it takes an abbreviation and body. Um, and then at the moment, all it does is construct a brand new one and return it. Um, and then on the front end, uh, we'll start here. Um, We've got um, an add snippet um, Svelte component that basically has a input and text area and then some buttons. And when the button's clicked to, uh, to say save, um, which is this one here, it calls the save handler, um, which just calls the back end. So it goes. Um, To have a look at that at some point. Um, it calls the go main app add snippet 
uh, with the two variables that we bound to the inputs. Um, and then it just gets back a result. Um, we're just doing a console. Um, we're doing two different things here. We're doing a console um, on the web browser as such, and then a back uh, on the back in the service. We do that as well. Um, so let's give that a quick um, a quick test. Make sure it's all running. So. Command Snippy GUI. We'll do Wells Dev. So this is the uh, the basic GUI. I'll just make it small. And then if I do that. and save. We get an object on the back end. It's a lot easier to see if I use the um, the browser version because I can use the console then easier. So this is um, the same app is running here. I get the uh, console open there and I'll um, I bump up the font on that. There we go, just a little bit. If I do the same kind of thing here, lots of stuff there. We'll see what comes out. There we go. So we're getting an object back, um, which has a zero doubt UUID because we never set it. Uh, the abbreviation, the body, and a last used date, which is basically a timestamp of null, I guess. Oh, that would be zero, 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 zero. So whatever, um, 1970, the 1st of January, 1970, um, is in seconds but negative. Okay, um, so it's working, um, but we need to actually call the dbus server and do stuff. So let's do a couple of things here. Um, what we'll do, um, is we'll get the debug server up and running. And a little test here is in the in the CLI. Um we will just do a Your list of SP stuff. There we go. So we've got the four, four, no, sorry, five snippets there. Um, if we were to do snippet list, let's do ASD. We get nothing. There's no snippet with ASD in it. So let's remedy that because that's obviously important. Um, no idea. Uh, let's. Right, so we know we are sending the data back. What we need to do is something with it. Um, so. What we did beforehand was we. Um, made the internal service um, go file, which was in the CLI and is still working by those things. Um, we made this, this piece of code, which does all the dbus communication 
um, into an internal package so that we can reuse it. Um, so we have things like ping, um, which we might use in a bit, uh, just to check that the daemon's up and running. Um, but of course we've got add snippet, uh, so we'd like to use that. And we did a little bit of basic um, setup um, in here. So what we've got is when the GUI function starts, um, we are calling the service new debug service, which is this. Uh, sorry, this connects to the session D, uh, connects to the session bus uh, using the um, custom destination and path that we want to use for our service, dbus service, um, to grab an object that we can then call services on. It's got an basically an endpoint. <clears throat> um, what we now want to do is call the add snippet um, function on that service. Um, that we've exposed. So uh, we will do that and it returns a dbus snippet. He says, no, it returns a proper snippet. So it's converted there, that's fine. Otherwise we might get an error so we should be okay to use this pretty and then we need to actually start displaying snippets which is a whole different thing but i just want to see one getting in to the database before we start moving on right so let's do this then I wonder, can we make this as simple as... We've got the same general signature there. We take an abbreviation on body. Um, and we return a snippet and or an error. So we could, in theory, Let's try this. A service and snippet deviation body. It could be that simple. Um, should actually have a little. That's oh, why did that die? Interesting. The uh. GUI just died. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, add snippet. Uh, oh, we've probably got no, we haven't apparently. Oh, it does. There we go. Seems like a good do that. Okay. 
So what we'll do is on the front end, instead of, um, <clears throat> right, that's just chaining at the moment, let's kill that off. Um, if we get a success back, which apparently is from the testing we did yesterday or the day before. Um, if we get an error, it always goes into the catch. So, um, For time being, what we'll do here is just put a alert. So many canons here. Um, but on the success condition, We should probably just close just close the page effectively and pop back. At some point, you might want to say, oh, and select the new one. Because it'll be a list at some point. But we can deal with that some other time. So we'll just do a pop. So we're just going back to wherever it was. I could do a little console thing here at the moment as well. Just for fun. Okay. See what happens. restricted. Okay. Let's do this over here. Hmm, what's going on? Has it changed?
same path. Why is that stopped working? It is working there. Hmm. Okay. Right, well, let's see. ASD. And then we'll do... This is a test. Snippet. So, right, it did the thing. So it bounced back to the, the initial page, but we, we're not doing any kind of checks for snippets yet, so we haven't got a list. But we did get back an object with a proper UUID, the abbreviation, the body's correct, um, and last used is set to zero, which means um, it's not been used yet. Um, so that's fine. And then in here, if we list ASD again, it shows up. Cool. So it's working. So it's talking to the daemon properly. Smart. Okay. Um, obviously it's a bit unknown. It's not very usable in that we're not seeing the results. Um, but we're certainly getting there. Okay. Let's um, close that off. We will kill that. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's see what happens. So that's come up and the debug server is fine and it's working. Um, but what we could do is kill the daemon for some reason. And then try this. There you go. Okay. Not the most helpful of messages, but at least it did what I expected and gave us an alert. Um, we probably want to use a dialogue instead. But we'll get there. Maybe do that next. Um, okay, I'm tempted to save that off as like work in progress. The one thing that's given me pause there is that we're not doing any kind of real error checking at the beginning. So at startup, we are getting a new service, but potentially the DBus connection and service will not um, be as they should. Um, and we should properly say, oops, you can't use this at the moment. Um, 
that's probably something that should actually continuously be checked on an interval. But we should also maybe have like a separate page that shows up. So where we have a welcome at the moment, we could go, oops, can't see the daemon, have you started it? And then in the future we could make that a lot prettier and useful. Okay. We'll do that as a separate exercise in a minute. Okay, let's just save this off as work in progress. Enable screen to save a snippet. Okay. Right. Um, let's let's do a little bit of um, robustness work here. Then let's make sure let's make sure that we have a oops screen. So, in the front end, in the components, I think um, there's two things we could do. We could upgrade the welcome screen. That's so like a default fallback. And it says, oh dear. Uh, can't connect to the daemon. Or we could have a totally separate route. That's probably best actually. That says, uh, is the daemon running? Yeah, let's do that. Um, I'll start with uh, a copy of that though. Um, what should we call this? No connection.
Actually, I should be calling these things like no connection screen. Even though this is a GUI, um, a desktop app, I feel like because it's web technologies, I should say page. Um, I think I'll just use page. No, change your mind. Definitely screen. You can always change it later. Okay. Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. So no connection. Um, What we're going to show on here, um, we are going to have that. Don't think we're going to have. could have a little button that says retest. Although it should really ought to do, do it automatically. We'll just use an interval. Um, Actually, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to have no. I don't need an icon. Well, I do. I think I'll just make it obvious what's what's going on there. Um, what I'll do. All right, let's do the basics. We will have a bit of text that says um, Damon no connection. And then in my global CSS, Yeah, we've got the danger thing there. Could use that. Okay. 
Um, let's try that. Let's see what happens. We do this. So we'll have it as class equals danger. We'll just get this going. Um, we don't need that. Uh, we are not using anything else there at the moment. We'll just come back to it later. Need it. Just do the basics here. And then in the app. That's fine, I guess. So we've added the root there, so we've got no uh, no connection root. Just wondering where I should do this test. So what I'm thinking here is if you're in the middle of adding a snippet and for whatever reason the daemon died, you wouldn't want to be thrown to another page that says well, the demons died. What you would probably want is for like the save to be disabled and a notice to be shown. I think I 
I think that's quite a high level thing. So I'm wondering whether So, whether I should, um, have a little wrapper for each of these pages. Sorry, screens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's rename this. So got a connection welcome. Refactor. Okay. Um, okay, I think, right, well, first of all, I should probably just give that a quick go and make sure that's still working. I'll bring up the daemon just to make sure. And then here, now that I've refactored a couple of things, I better just make sure it still works. Okay. That's the correct screen. That's the correct screen. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I think, yes, I think what I need. Right in screen. Wrapper. So in here. Um, start off with, let's just 
bit of a placeholder here. Just going to have a slot, that's it. That means I've got this to I can hang off there if I need to. Don't think I'll need to, but we'll see. That might mess up a few things on the padding at the moment, but we'll get back to that. Um, and then then I think what we'll have it's a new svelte component here and we'll call this um, Could just call it no connection notice, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to make it pretty raw and uh, I can always upgrade it later. So it doesn't have to be a div, it could be at the moment power graph, and we'll have um, a connection. So we've got a very simple component there that I might embellish later and or make um it might might I might have like a, a notice class at some point a component and this will be just a slot into it basically eventually and saying I'm you know use the danger variation and whatnot. But for the moment this will do. Um and then on the screen, we we'll use that. So this is going to show all the time right at the moment. So we'll need to put a wrap around that. So we'll do some we'll do some stuff in a sec, but at the moment I just want to see it. 
um, and then on every screen, so on the welcome screen, that is a slot into the screen. Okay, and then we have also we have welcome, and we have add snippet, which also needs to be a screen. Oops. So we've got a screen component now, which takes a slot. Um, and then I guess we could do it on the uh, no connection as well. And get shot of that. screen as well. So for the moment, even though the daemon's running, if we run it, we should see no connection. He says, or not. Why is that then? What did I miss? Too much recursion. Interest. Where's that coming from? Wow, okay. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> no connection screen. <laughs> Don't notice. <laughs> That'll be why. <laughs> okay. Now it's more like it. All right. Okay. Oh, I still need to change the uh, the board on this so I can grab it. Right. So I've got no connection there. Um, let's update the uh, text on that. Okay. Uh, no snippets found, no connection will do.
Then what I want to do from there, um, is turn that on and off. So, hmm, this is where it's going to get fun. We're going to need a store, I think. The connection's happening on the back end. Um, the front end knows nothing about the um, D bus connection, apart from obviously we're populating warnings and so on. Um, so on the back end, This will be fun. How are we going to do that? Actually, It's the front end that wants to know. So the front end should go, hey, are you still alive? Hey, are you still alive? So what we could do is have a little ping that happens every I don't know, 10 seconds, 5, 10 seconds. In fact, that could do be a complete like state check. Um, it could be refreshing the snippets and everything. Yeah, updating all the stores, which we've not even started to find in yet. Let's do, well, I'm not going to have a lot of time here. Um, I don't have to finish up just now. Um, I haven't got any meetings or anything just now, but I do need to get on with my day in about half an hour. So really, um, maybe a bit less. Um, so let's, um, Let's decide what we're going to do here. I think I think what we need is I think I'll have a new fold in here. And we'll just call this uh, JS.
And in here, we'll create a new JavaScript file. And we'll have that we call stores. Um, so we're going to need to do some stores in here. So Think. I could do it. I could do it in app. No, no, it'll start getting a bit messy in there, won't it? It's really just like set up the basics there. It is nicer having stores in Svelte components because um, you don't have to muck about with uh, get and stuff like that if you're cross-referencing and things, but I'm probably not going to be cross-referencing much, if any. I'm going to try and keep this really simple. Um, so a store, there's, um, there's a few different types. Let's see if we can get to... There we go. Oops, stores. I want, in particular, Writable. Um, if for this interval check at minimum, um, so the basic principle here is that um, I'll do a show me just so I've got it. Um, Here's the stores. So it's doing, it's creating a store called count. Um, and it starts it off as a writable store with a value of zero. And it's just a variable really. Um, but it has hidden powers. Um, so what you can do um, is, what are they doing here? They're doing, oh, they're doing this subscribe and all kinds of things, okay. Um, in the documenter here, um, it's just saying count update, and it's setting the value to n minus one. So when you call the update um, function on a store, you are given the current value, and then you can do something with it. Um, on the resetter, it will do a set. So that's saying I don't care what your value is now. Um, I am setting your value to this. And you can pass anything you like. So it doesn't have to be an integer. It could be an object or whatever. So you can have a writable store that holds an object or an array or um, string, whatever. Um, it is just a variable, but it has these extra functions on it. Um, and as seen on the top there, you can subscribe to it. So you can say whenever the value of that count 
um, changes, I'm going to do something. And in this case, it's setting a local count value to the value. Um, so when you do this, so it's going to say the count value, so the count is this value here. So when I increment, it goes up. And when I decrement, it goes down. And if I do a reset, you see I'll do a set zero. Uh, that's that's actually a fairly convoluted way of doing things there. Um, you can instead. Um, so I could take out that. So if I take this out. Like that. It's not going to work. There's no count value. But if instead I go dollar count, it's back. Because every store also has an exposed uh, dollar version, which is actually just a su subscription. So it'll still work now. Um, like that. Um, so you don't need to do that whole subscribe function unless you want to do something else with it. So maybe um, maybe you wanted to do something fancy whereby you're not just using the value, um, you're going to manipulate some other functions and create some other object or whatever you're going to do. Um, so, but we are basically going to do this. Um, we're going to effectively take this. I'll just copy it in fact. Um, and I'm going to have a, a store which says um, daemon available or connection connected. Maybe connected? Daemon connected? Something like that. I don't know. Let's try it. Um, so in here uh, we will have what should we call it? Could just have connection, okay. Yeah. It's a boolean. off like that and then yes it depends on how I'm going to do this Could just use ping. But I could also go grab all the data as well into a local store. I mean, so many.
All right, let's just do this. And then um, I think what we'll do is I'll do it here. So what we'll do All right, I'm gonna start off with a very basic thing. So we'll have um, import connection OK. What did you do there? Why did you do that? Um, and then we'll just have a simple statement here so yeah yeah so if the connection's not okay We show this. This is the very, very basic here. So if I save that at the moment, that's still going to show because the store is always false. If I were to switch that, make it true. So it starts off as connected. The connect the uh, notice goes away. So let's do that. Put it back to what we want. And then in the screen, we should update that. So uh, we're going to need. Gonna need a little interval function um, to just ping and update the store. I suspect at some point I could move this. into a separate component. But I won't at the moment. Um, so there's a couple of things I need to do here. I don't want to start it straight away. What I want to use is let's go to the docs for this on mount, I think. Um, where's on mount. So this means I can basically call a little function that says, okay, when this component is shown, uh, do this. Not until then do you do anything. Um, and it basically means everything's initialized uh, before you get to this point. Um, so 
we're going to want to effectively do well this really we're going to import on mount um, and then we're going to call a function that starts an interval um, so let's do the basics um, so we'll do an import on mount Out. and then on mount uh, takes nothing does something um, and then we're going to have to do an interval. Um, before I go anywhere, I should put my semicolon in. I think well, there's a couple of different variations of um, doing a set interval, isn't there? I think that's the one I want. There's an alternative though, isn't there? Where's the alternative? Right, here we go. Oh, I was just thinking the set timer. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is um, basically that. I am going to Do I have to do a let there? Yeah. So let um, check com interval. We'll do that. And then we'll do check on interval equals set interval. And then we're going to have some function, uh, which I guess we're going to call check 
con and we'll do it every five seconds. So function check con doesn't take any arguments. Um, and we're going to do a ping. Now I also want to do uh, what's the opposite of on mount? Should be on destroy, I think. Or yeah, on destroy. So I could do that. I want to do the opposite here. Um, so on destroy. Bring it in. Or we're going to just do a clear interval. Check on. Okay. So that's going to set up a five second interval that's going to call this function. So if we were to just uh, do a console.log here, actually we can use the, uh, the window one. Window time uh, log info check in connection. So in theory, what we should see is that every screen is going to be doing that. Every five seconds. There we go. Check in connection. And if, even if I move over here, it should still do check in connection. Two, three, four, five. There you go, another one. Cool. Okay. So that's up and running. Uh, what we actually want to do is a ping. So back in the uh, back end, we're going to add a new function found in the ping. We'll do this up here. So take A as a pointer to app and we'll just call it ping. And let's go to I'll check the service for that. Okay, I need to give it something. And then we get a string or an error. Back. The default is Pong. Um, I'm going to return response string or error. Yeah, I probably shouldn't name it there. Oops. Let's 
So we'll just call um, is a ping expected. That's it. So this backend is going to call the uh, the library uh, ping. That's interesting. Why is it doing that? Why is it dying every now and then? Hmm. It's like um. Wales is having problems connecting to this to itself there. Okay. So in the screen we'll do um Was it go? Go main app ping. Um, and we'll just pass an empty string because we, we just expect pong back. Well, let's do that. And uh, then um, oh we can just do we can do the shorthand here we can do a connection equals true Although presumably I should really do this. Where did it come from? Okay. Do, yeah, I should probably do it properly. So I'll do um, if result equals pong. We'll do um, we'll do an error message here, just to the console. Got result blah back from ping instead of OK, 
Okay, so do that for the moment as well. We'll just just as a debug thing. Take this out in a second, actually. So that's the connection hopefully up and running there, but I do also need to check um, the catch condition. Um, what we'll do is um, Well, it's a simple thing we've got to do. And then, well, that as well, actually. As such. Lock the error basically on the back end. Okay, so every five seconds we're going to call check con. Uh, we're going to do a quick debug log there, and then we're going to call the back end ping, expecting pong back. Uh, we're going to get some sort of result, hopefully. Um, and if the result is Pong, we're going to set the store to true for connection OK. Otherwise, we'll set it to false because we didn't get what we expected, but we did get a result. Um, and we're going to log got some result back from Ping instead of Pong. Otherwise, if an error happens, which is the case that we're generally going to have if the daemon's not up and running, Again, we set the connection explicitly to false, um, and then we read, um, uh, log the error in the console just down here, such, uh, and then we're done with the log info there. So let's see what happens. There we go. Right, so that's connected OK. Didn't need, didn't get any, any, any adverse response there, so I set it to true. And then if I kill the daemon, there we go, it's come back. Ping returned, the name, blah, 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 was not provided by any service. Uh, OK. So that is working. However, um, well, let's bring it back up. There we go. Back connection. That's good. Um, what we can do now is we should on mount, we should do a quick, quick run of check con. Um, because otherwise we're waiting five seconds for the next run. So um, let's do that here. Um, that's it.
right. Cool. All right, let's get rid of some of this login. We don't need all this. Um, in fact, we'll do that here. Right, so we're only login errors, which is fine. No console stuff going on there. If I kill the daemon, at some point it'll be found out. There we go. And then if I bring it back up, There we go. Good stuff. Okay. Now that's useful, but there is a little snag there. So if I kill it off, so it's now disconnected and I go to that. Yeah, sure. But these buttons are still available and still usable. Cancel we always want available, but we don't want save available. We can't save anything. Um, so. It looks a little bit funky there, actually. Let me just double check that that div hasn't. Hmm. Okay. I thought so. Okay. Quick fix. <laughs> so. Uh, I've got. I've just broken the uh, the page layout there because I've now got um, got an app div which has taken up 100% in theory, but inside it the screen isn't. Um, so if I look at um, the global. We've got app. that but I don't need to do the same for the screen um what I'll do will I do it here yeah I'll just do it here as it's a fairly top level thing in theory I guess I should be able to just do screen um to 100% I think get away with that let's make sure that we don't have any weirdness with screens there and we'll we'll make it as long as it is um, direct child of app just to be sure. There we go. Okay. So if I kill off the daemon now. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. That's not good. So. We need to deal with that. Can we do Hmm, actually, thinking about it. I 
I wonder. Could I instead get a shot of that? In a minute, I might have to just do a little finagling with the app div there. But if I purely do it on the screen, that might fix things up. He says, and he's wrong. Oh, of course. No, hold on a second. That's not what I expected. Okay, I'm gonna have to um, get on with my day in a second, but that, that doesn't make sense. Let's just quickly check. So, No, so I'm not doing anything weird there. There's no... We've got the container. But the screen should already be a hundred percent, so I What I don't get, okay, is that when this pops in, everything goes wrong when it shouldn't. Oh, okay, the container is saying I am 100%. Here's a problem there.
Hmm. I'll have to look at that because that means mucking about on margins, I think. Or well, the connection notice is just going to have to be in the containers. Could do that. Hmm. If I have a notice area instead, that would make it easier. So instead of that being in there, we do it in every single one. So I think I might change this in the future so that we have like a connection area instead, a uh, notice area. But if we did that, yeah, then it's within the bounds and it's understood. Although, when you think about it, Could I 
have every screen. Start off. As a column flex. Let's try that. Not sure if that's going to work actually. We'll see. So we display flex. Make it 100% of the height. It has the content in it. This could be messy. Oh, it could work. Okay. Oh, come on, do your thing. So, need to fix this. There we go. Right, so that's doing the right thing. That's what we want. Okay, cool. Right, so, um, so that means add snippet. Now it's a little bit simpler. We just have styling for its contents. We are using the default column flex layout there, and everything is hunky dory. Then in the welcome screen, same again, centered. Uh, is saying, okay, blah, 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 line item center. 
Well, well, here's the thing. Let's do export that. Centered equal false. And then class centered. And then in the welcome screen. Get shot of all that and say, Hey, please be centered. So that's okay. So let's just double check that's doing what I think it's doing. be Ooh. now how does that interact with the uh, notice so okay still okay it's just it just doesn't stretch that's all because it's centered there Sure, I could do a an override for that some other time. Um, but that's okay. Right. Um, there's one last thing. I'm way over time, but I don't actually have to stop just now. I can just do the last final bit on the screen, which is okay. So we've got this context here we'll say uh, I suppose what I'm about to say there um, we have this check con interval here uh, which is only um, scoped to the screen component um, but what we want to do is tell things like um, this screen here you can't do a save um, so rather than um there's two ways we can do it we could use the store um to say disable anything in the page or we could send a context um down through the hierarchy so that we just say everything's disabled um Previously, I've been using context, but it does get a little bit messy. I used it because I have in my other project uh, various levels of uh, context effectively. And so at some points I want to disable things and some I didn't. Uh, 
and it was easier to say, okay, everything under here, just disable. Um, but this is a simpler scenario, and I think the store on its own probably is probably enough. So I should be able to Let's do something like um, can we do let's do it in the add snippet screen. What we want to do is we want to disable this button if the connection has gone down. So we'll do import connection OK. And then in here, We will do something like disabled equals. Okay. What's that complaining? I just created it. Um I think I can do that. I got that around the right way. Is that what I meant? <laughs> no, I'm having a bad day. Hold on. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so I'm making this a reactive um, variable, and it's on the opposite of connection OK. So if if the connection is not OK, I want disabled to be true. Um, and if the disabled is true, in theory. I want this button to be disabled. But that won't know anything about it. So we're going to then do Export net disabled this by default. And then here I uh, guess we can just do disabled. And 
then is there a um So when it's disabled, what color should we use? Uh, don't have a disabled thing, do we? Maybe Oh, I can't use tertiary because that's the highlight now. Um, highlight's a little bit too... Standy LT. Maybe though. Let's try that. What we're going to do is we're going to do um, We're going to do all these actually. Yeah, I want all of them. I want to change the color, the border, and the cursor. So the cursor is going to be back to the default. Oh, actually, can I do, um, so like a disabled or no or not? Do. Try that. Um, background color, we're going to make highlight the color we want to have. I'll keep it background for the moment. And the border color I want to keep as highlight as well. So let's see what happens, whether that even helps. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that button is now disabled and you can't click it or do anything. Can use that one still. But this one, disabled. Um, and then, hmm, should really have a tooltip on it if it's disabled. Let's do, um, well, maybe I'll do that some other time because I really do need to go on my day. But I was just thinking whether I should just have a title. Because um, we can, presumably, can I do, um, do title equals Oh, What's going on with that? Will that show up on the button? Yeah, okay. Mm, oh, that's interesting. Um, so what I could do is um, just a simple uh, disabled or something like that, but we'll get there. All right. 
right, so that's taken out, so that's not going to do anything. No uh, title now. Can't press that. If I re-enable, it's back already. And I can do that. And in theory, it did nothing. No error. Hmm. I'll have to look, see if I've got some stuff there. But that's fine. Cool. Okay, really ought to get on my day now. Um, focus again. Okay. So I think we're in a good state there to do the next thing, whatever that is. Let's do a quick diff on all that. So we have in um, add snippet screen, got some new bits and bobs. I'm using the screen component now. Um, and taking the flex from screen. In app, we've got a ping function now. In apps felt, we are now doing a welcome, add snippet, and note connection screen. We've not used the note connection screen yet. We'll have to do with that some other time. I haven't got time today. Uh, what's this? Okay, that's bindings. Then more bindings, that's good. Button we've added disabled with some styling. We've got some assets now. That's interesting. Compiled up. That's the original. Ah, I can take that out. That's okay, very bare bones at the moment, but it does the job. Haven't really used that yet, but we will at some point. Oh, in fact, we need to fix that up. Screen, so that's the new component. It's doing its job okay. Got a scope style with a screen there, which is good. Okay, store, and then we've got some vendor stuff. And then the welcome screen is a bit cleaned up. I'm just doing that, showing that actually. So just a quick thing there then. Um, in the global. I 
I guess that's okay. thing. So it should say, hey, up, there's no, no connection. Okay. And then bring up Snippy Pixie here on the daemon. It switches on. That's good. And then back here, if I kill this off, it comes in. That's good. Okay. Five seconds. That's okay. I could probably do it quicker. I could probably do a second because it is all local stuff. It's not going over the internet or anything, but I'll do for the moment. Um, okay. I do need to kind of clean this up as well, though. We'll sort that out some other day. Okay, let's commit this. time to start my day. Uh, thanks for watching um, and until next time uh, you take care. Bye.